Hello again, Pix Insight fans. This is Steve Duffy coming to you once again from the Robert Ferguson Observatory. Today's tutorial, we're going to talk about deconvolution. Deconvolution is a concept that is often misunderstood, and we'll talk about what it is and what it does. To get started, I'm going to open a luminance image that I have here. Uh, this is NGC 772 the Nautilus Galaxy. First thing I want to say about deconvolution is that it is not sharpening per se. Sharpening really is about increasing the contrast at the edges that exist in your image. So an edge is someplace where you have a sharp transition from dark to light and sharpening tends to emphasize those transitions by darkening the dark and lightening the light. Deconvolution, on the other hand, really is about creating edges. Uh, when you take these pictures with your, your camera, you've got the problem of seeing and the problem of uh, maybe a little bit of motion due to guiding or due to uh, wind, and the image is a little bit blurry. And deconvolution is trying to remove that blurriness, and in so doing, it recreates edges in the image that can then be sharpened. And we'll see how to do that. Now, another important thing is that deconvolution really only works well on linear images. I'm not going to dive into why that is. Just remember that that's true. You, you always want to do this at a very early stage in your process. What I'm going to do here, first of all, to speed this up a little bit, is I'm going to crop this image so that we're focused primarily on the central galaxy and we won't be spending um, a lot of time waiting for things to process while we work. So here we go. Let's, let's take, I'm going to take this much. And I'm taking this much because I want to get a, a, an assortment of stars. Okay, so there's our cropped image. Okay, and I'll resize it to full size. You see it's a pretty decent image. This is another thing about deconvolution is that you really need good signal to noise ratio. If, you're, if your background is very noisy, the deconvolution process operates on that noise and sharpens up or brings the, the contrast out in that noise and it, it turns all grainy and ugly looking. So let's get started in the process. First of all, I'm going to make a copy. What am I going to do with that? Well, I'm going to use it to make a mask. So I'm going to change the identifier to say it's the mask. Next thing I need to do is, since it's a mask and since this image is linear, it's not going to be a very good mask since it's pretty much all black. If I turn off the screen stretch, you see that it's almost all black. So it's not going to be very good as a mask. So the first thing we need to do is use the histogram transformation to stretch it. And so I'm going to bring the, the histogram into the histogram transformation tool. You see it's way to the left. I'm going to try setting up the auto clip, the shadows and the highlights. And let's see what that does for us. So it gives us a pretty good mask type image. And what I would like to see, the, bat, the sky is, is plenty dark. I would like to see the galaxy be somewhat brighter. I'm going to try to brighten that up a bit. And there it's getting nice and bright in the arms right in here. That's where we want to do deconvolution. But of course, it's also brightened up the background. So I'm going to apply this the way it is and then reset and try to darken the background. So here we go with darkening the background. See, it takes quite a lot to darken the background. But that is kind of what we want. 
pretty white galaxy pretty dark everywhere else let's go for that so now close the preview we'll zoom into this and you see that it itself is pretty noisy and so we don't want our mask to be noisy like that so we're going to blur it a little bit and we'll use for that we'll use convolution you don't need to be too tricky with this the only thing that you really need to maybe adjust is the standard deviation I might try 1.7 and then apply it and there we go so now we don't have such a noisy background great close that now our, our first mask is ready we have multiple things to do in this so I'm going to shrink this and set it to the side now the next thing I'm going to do is do noise reduction on the linear image so once again this is the real luminance. I'm going to zoom in, uh, maybe even a little bigger than that. And it's pretty clean, but it's not perfectly clean. So we're going to get this multi scale linear transform. And I'll start with just the one pixel noise reduction. This, so this is scales one pixel, two pixel, four pixel and I usually set it this is set for threshold of three standard deviations and the amount full 100 percent and iterations three so let's run that and see what happens and it's cleaner but it's not really as clean as I would like it I'm going to back that off and I'm going to apply the mask we just made Now in this case, I need to invert the mask because what I'm trying to do is clear up the noise in the shadows. So keep the galaxy masked and clean up all of this nonsense out here. So, so this time I'm going to use the 2 pixel level and I usually do two iterations at 67% with a threshold of 2. Let's see what that does for us. Yeah, that's what we want. So it's not perfectly noise free, which is good. We want a tiny bit of noise, but it's not going to be so noisy that it, that the uh, deconvolution picks it up. Okay. So put this aside. I'm going to disable the mask. For right now. Actually, I'll just delete the mask for right now. So, the next thing we have to do is make a star mask. I'm going to go back to this scale for that. Now, when you're making a star mask, what you're trying to do, we're only going to use it, we're not going to get all the stars. We're only trying to get the big stars because they're the ones that have a lot of ringing. Uh, when you do deconvolution. So the way that we do that is by setting the lower threshold and I'll show you that right now. Star mask. I'm going to leave all of these settings pretty much as they are but up here I'm going to change this to a scale of 7 to pick up these bigger stars. And I'm going to change this noise threshold to 0.2 which basically eliminates all of these little stars. They're, they're, they're going to be deconvolved and that's what we want and they don't ring much. And we'll set this shadows at point two as well. And we'll just do a trial run and see what happens. So we've got make this the same size 
and you see that what it's done is picked up only the biggest stars probably actually not quite enough so I'm going to go back to the default 0 0.11 0 0.10 and run it again compare these side by side yeah you're starting to see some in, in this area but I think I'm going to quit with that. It, since, since I've gone this low, uh, I'm confident that it's going to get the right star. So we'll, we're just going to use this, keep this star mask, and set it aside. Okay. And now we need a point spread function. And so the way we get the point spread function is... Zoom in on this, and you open this process, uh, Dynamic PSF. And that opens this big window, which I'm going to slide to the side here. Uh, really, we don't, we don't need to see it much. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a bunch of stars out of our image. And it's going to make a standard sample star to use in the deconvolution function. Now these stars, they all have a little bit of eccentricity to them due to the motion of your mount and your guiding. And what you're trying to do is capture that eccentricity in your PSF function, your standard star. So it's to do that, it's important to pick stars that are from the center of your image. Now, you remember I cropped this image already, so this is mostly central to the, to the image already. But if you start picking stars out in the corners, you get distortion due to your optics. So you can get stars that are elongated in multiple different directions in the corners of your optics if your field isn't perfectly flat. So the advice is to stick toward the center. That's advice number one. Advice number two is mentally divide your stars up into quartiles. The largest is the, the fourth quartile. The smallest is the first quartile. Then you have kind of medium small and medium large. So we want to pick medium small stars. Not the tiny stars, and not certainly not big stars. The big stars kind of hide the eccentricity. The small stars are too variable in their brightness and their diameter. So it's, it's easy to pick out these semi-small ones. And I, I will pick a number of them, and you do that by just clicking on them. So there's a good one. We're going to do this kind of all around the center of the image. We're going to try to get about 25 to 30 of them so that we have a good sampling. And you'll see a lot of advice about being really critical about getting these all exactly the same size and sorting them and refining them. I find that that doesn't add much value. Of course you can do it, but the, the, the effect on the final image, I've tried it both ways many times and it doesn't have a, a huge effect. Uh, there's 25. I want to get a few more. You see that it's marking these with a little X, and that X is kind of aligned with the direction of the eccentricity. And I'm going to call it good here pretty quick. This one's a little too big. This one is a galaxy. We don't want to get confused by its shape. So we're going to say that's good. Okay, so now you can see that we've got all of these stars selected here in this so what I'm going to do now, this, this orange line indicates that that row is selected. I'm going to go all the way to the top, 
Under that row, I'm going to pull down my shift key and click, and I'm going to select all of them. And what that's going to do is use them all in the export. And to export, you just click on this little camera icon. And just like that, it has made a PSF function. And there it is. So there's the standard star that we're going to use for deconvolution. And we really don't need that dynamic PSF anymore. Let's shrink this. This back to standard size and close that dynamic PSF. So now we have all of the tools that we need to do deconvolution. So I'm going to open the deconvolution process and we're going to get it set up. So First thing I want to do is wavelet regularization. I'm going to do set it to three layers. The noise threshold 321, that's fine. I'm going to reduce this to 0.35. What that's doing is, is minimizing the amount of this grain generation that occurs in the background. Go to deringing. And we're going to do local de-ringing and local support is the star mask. So, star mask 1. And it's not really functioning as a star mask exactly. It's, it's just functioning to as a place for the de-ringing to concentrate on. Now, another feature here is that the program will basically brighten areas or darken areas around the stars. Usually you see dark rings and what this program does at the default setting is it brightens them too much and it changes from dark rings to bright rings. So I like to dial this back to about 0 0.6, 0.7. It kind of depends on the image and how good your signal to noise ratio is. I seldom use the global bright, uh, so we'll, we'll start with that. Now we need to go and choose that we're going to use an external PSF, and we're going to use the PSF that we created. This one, so that's that, this little guy right here. Now we have one more thing to do, which is this can take a long time to run, so we want to make a preview for sure when we're when we're testing our deconvolution. And we want to make a preview that includes some of the object, some of the small stars, and some of the big stars. So in this case I'm going to pick right through here. That's my preview. Set it like so, so that I can get a good look at what's happening. I'm going to go to the biggest scale also. So, I really want to see what, what's going on with these, these arms, this galaxy, this star. And you can see that the edges in this galaxy are not very evident. Okay. Oh, so, one more thing I didn't do yet. I forgot, I, I deleted the mask, I need to add the mask back in. Okay, so now we're only going to act on the, the small stars and the galaxy. So that's good. Now we're going to hide the mask, even but it's still working, but we're going to hide it so that we can see the effects because the effects are subtle for sure. Drop this on here. Run 10 iterations, and what do we see? Well, hard to tell, but if I do Control shift z I can page back and forth through this. So there you can see that it got a little clearer in those arms. It's also bringing out some 
noise or something right in here. Maybe some little faint galaxies that are far in the background. Hard to tell, but you can see this stuff starting to appear. You may have to re do a reset, but we'll see. We'll, we'll do some more iterations and watch what happens. The big star looks good. The little stars look good. I think in that sense we're doing okay, as long as we don't get curdling in the background. So I'm going to what I'm going to do is double the number of iterations and run this again. Now with the preview, the interesting thing is it's not cumulative. Every time you, you, you run it, it, it starts as though the preview is untouched. So we're going to run it again here. And it's a little more pronounced than before. Notice this star right here is you can really see some evidence of the deconvolution as well. You see that it's getting a little bit of a dark ring around it, right? And the more iterations I do, the darker that will get. So I'm going to need to bump that dark compensation back up a little bit. So I set it to 0.06. Let's try 0.08. And run it again. Yeah, so now that that darkness is gone. It's just shrinking the star. And it is brightening the arms, clarifying the arms quite a bit. All right, so let's try it with 40 iterations. And I usually like to click outside the box to make sure that the iteration number was committed. All right, so I'm starting to get a dark ring again around that same star. It's even noticeable right here around this star. Watch my control shift Z back and forth. So I'm going to have to raise that again. I'm liking the way the galaxy is looking. I, more iterations just tends to make things get worse. I'm not too happy with this noise up in here. I may have to do uh, two versions of this to to blend the background with the deconvolved the galaxy, we'll see. But what I am going to do is raise this back up to point 0.1 and run this again. Yeah, so no dark rings this time. I think I'm going to accept that value. So, what's left to do? Uh, delete the preview. Go back to the main image. Put it on huge. And we're going to run this with 40 iterations. I want to make sure that the mask is in place. Yes, it is. Ah, it was disabled. That's why I was getting that curdling in the background. Okay, this time we should get excellent results. Yeah, so we did. You notice that the background is not curdled. All these little tiny dim galaxies, they're still showing, but they're not messed up. We don't have dark rings around any of our stars. We're looking, we're looking good here. To kind of reiterate what it looked like before, do the undo. 
And so you see that the effect on the arms is not huge, but it is noticeable and you can you can definitely go too much. You can, you can turn these arms into little blobs. Uh, so the trick is to be judicious in the application of deconvolution. But from here you go on to uh, sharpening and, and things like that, uh, which we've covered in, before in other tutorials. So there you go. There's deconvolution in a, hopefully a short tutorial. Thanks for watching.